big one. We're going up to commentary. Leger, Donald, up to you. Thanks, Kimani. You're absolutely right. It's, it's time for the big one here. And uh, we're looking forward to this battle between Central High and Glenmuir High. As uh, we take a look at the happenings of Group L so far, Glenmuir with a 4 0 victory over Harbourview to pretty much start their campaign. And uh, pour us, well, pour them after their 18 0 trouncing by Denby, who are top of the group on goal difference. Not surprisingly, they have the same amount of points as Glenmuir 3, but the goal difference is, uh, well, it's huge having deposited. Uh, 18 goals in the bank of porous uh, in that first game but now we're on to central against Glenmuir and central high making their way onto the field and they'll be followed by the home team in red Glenmuir high it is their ground and they'd want to make a statement for those watching here at the playing field and those watching in TV land what will Glenmuir, the Ben Francis Cup winners of last season, come up with against a team that made it all the way to the final of the DaCosta Cup, but lost to Clarendon College. And apparently Clarendon College, they were a level above everyone else in the DaCosta Cup. It is now time for the playing of the National Anthem. Central will make their way across to Glenmuir and uh, greet their opponents. But what will they, they offer this season, Central High? Because they surprised a lot of people to make it all the way to the final of the Costa Cup. It can be said that they surprised themselves, and I don't think it's harsh to say that they had a, a bit of fortune. Uh, in making their way to the final last year. Yeah, they had a lot of fortune, and it can be said that Glenmere had a lot of misfortune mm. on their way. Yes, they won the Ben Francis Cup, but I know that's not the title that they would have wanted, the title that their coach, Andrew Peart, would have wanted either. But they're here to set all of that right this season in the DaCosta Cup, and let's see the lineup that they have to do it. Glenmuir High, the national under-15 goalkeeper, is between the sticks, Justin Murray. They have a back four of New Money Blackwood, O'Neill Headley, Tavon Coleman and Brandon Wallace in the middle of the park. Jason White, uh, Tayshawn Rowe and Kyle Gordon. And up top, DeAndre Johnson, Orain Watson, who has scored two goals so far already, as well as their number 11, Nyron Allen. Christopher Mason is the man in charge of this one. Keone Denton and Kishana Robinson will assist him. As we take a look at the team from Central High, they have a back four similar to what we saw in last season's the Costa Cup final. Ronnie Carriott is, of course, between the sticks and the back four of Emery Ayton, Henry Gordon, Zidane and Christie, the captain, and Stephen Hamilton pretty much unchanged in the middle of the park. Tyrese Thomas, but we've seen Javan McDonald and Nathaniel Howe, who will be behind uh, the three-pronged uh, strike attack James Gadamore on the left Ian Noel a newbie on the right hand side and of course uh, James Dyer uh, through the middle
There they are, filled with purpose. And uh, so many players from last season, so they are experienced. And uh, maybe they would want to make that journey to the final once more, a little bit more comfortable, with a little bit more confidence, and uh, I suppose more self-assured in their disposition. Yeah, I would think so. They must have a new found confidence in their program central and they'll be looking to show that in this their first game of the season but Glenmuir too have a point to prove and we're on the way here at Glenmuir High central looking for the long ball immediately that was how sending it long How will Glenmuir play at home, though? It's a good crowd in at Glenmuir High School. A lot of individuals coming from neighboring communities. Quite a few out of the parish of Clarendon to support a team that they have a lot of interest in for this season. This one dinked long and over the top. And it's going to be a goal kick to Glenmuir High. They played some good football last year, Leger Williams. And I, I know that you were impressed by how they actually played last season, Glenmuir High. Yeah, I think they had one of the more interesting tactical setups last season. Andrew Peart, ever the coach, looking to innovate and try and bring new ideas into Jamaican football. And hopefully we'll see more of that on show in this game today. This is Giovanna McDonald, who has lost possession. And Glenmuir will go the other way. McDonald applying a bit of pressure and uh, utilizing his strength well there. We've seen it before from Zidane Christie, who now wears the captain's armband for Central. And he's going to be critical at the back. Hamilton with the interception. Glenn, you're trying to go the other way. But this is Central through Dyer. Dyer scored three goals last year. We'd want a lot more. Dinking it into space. There was nobody there in brown and white. Here they come again. Dyer seeking some help. Johnson couldn't collect and it goes the other way. Central. Trying to make sure that Glenmuir, they don't have an opportunity to play the passing game, which they love. We we'll see a lot of pressing and a lot of closing down in the opening couple of minutes here. Ball switched over to the right-hand side. Almost got through to Nyron Allen. And Central goes the other way. Was that a foul? It was, according to Christopher Mason. It's a free kick to Central. He's asking for the card. You don't really like to see that on the field, right? But uh, how is beckoning to the referee that maybe his challenger should have been booked there? Let's see if he's right. No, I don't think so. It's just a trip. And they're trying to st stop that from getting, or trying to take that away from the beautiful game, asking for cards. We see that the players who ask for the cards are the ones who end up getting booked especially in England. Tyrese Thomas is behind this. Again, a dink inside the box. Header there. The flag goes up for offside. The referee hasn't seen it as yet. And uh, he will allow play to continue. And Glenmuir lose possession. Well, he did try to play the advantage. Glenmuir just didn't utilize it. Glenmuir haven't seen a lot of the ball in the first three and a half minutes. It's been all central. Central actually finished second to Glenmuir in the group stage last year. They started their campaign with a 3-1 loss to Denby High. 
And again, they, they want to start this campaign a little bit more. Uh, with a little bit more confidence, I suspect. But it's a... It's an opponent that they wouldn't appreciate facing so early. There's Andrew Peart, the man in charge at Glenmuir High. Jermaine Douglas, like their outfit. Although I'm not sure if uh, Juventus is a sponsor of Central High these days, but I guess they're copying the design. Let's hope the uh, Italian club is not too aware of it. Yeah, the logo front and center as well, but speaking of front, Nathaniel Howe trying to put Central in front. His first sighter of the game. Kyle Gordon. Lovely ball on the left-hand side. Uh, the flag is up for offside. Just couldn't evade the trap there. I think that's DeAndre jo Johnson over the far side. Yeah. Did score in the game on Wednesday over Old Harbour. A former player of Spalding, now called Al Alphonsus Davis High, played on the 14 for them and has been with Glenmuir High a couple of years now, DeAndre Johnson. Yeah, a really talented player can play in those attacking midfield areas and on the wings. He's stationed on the left wing for this game. Did score six goals last year for Glenn Muir, did DeAndre Johnson. And he's a dangerous player out wide, as most wingers do. He loves to run into space. Did he time his run there? He did on that occasion. Kyle Gordon. How? <laughs> McDonald. Emery Aiton is playing in the right back position as he goes long. Sometimes we see him at left back, Emery Aiton. But Stephen Hamilton is now in that left back position well done in the end there glad me are wingers staying as wide as possible to stretch the pitch here's how yeah, just robbed of the possession, but does well to win it back and was stripped. But he maintains the possession, so referee says play on. Here's Central, playing it around at the back as they try to make that transition, but almost got themselves in trouble there. But the claim you're not quite attacking. You mentioned Central having a more confident approach this season, seeing what they did last, and you can already see it with the type of football that they're playing. We're already looking much more adept at passing the ball around and doing it to Glenmuir, who were almost the masters of that in the Costa Cup last season. You know, but they played a couple of good games at Central High, and even actually had one of the goals of the season last year as Glenmuir coming forward again. Ball played inside. I think that was always going to be a difficult pass, but he still tried it anyway, did Nywan Allen. Yeah, I think he had space to really push up into yeah. that right wing zone. But yeah, that goal you mentioned was actually at this very ground for Central. Yep, Shane Gordon. Oh, they're going to miss him this season. 
Yeah, really talented player. Looked young for his age. I actually thought he had a couple more years, but last season was his final season. Shane yeah. Gordon. So uh, Andrew Peart is uh, probably glad that they won't, con they won't have to contend with him. Although he did lose a big player in David Reed, who is yep. now plying his trade with Harbour View. Looking forward to seeing him for the Stars of the East this coming Jamaica Premier League season. Exciting player who had 12 goals and 16 assists to his name, yeah. uh, David Reed. Yeah, whenever you lose close to 30 goal contributions from one player, it's always going to be difficult to replicate. That has to be spread all across the squad. Let's see how Andrew Peart does that. That's a good ball over the top by Howe. Yeah. Getting there is Ian Noel. Getting some help from Dyer as well, who was thinking of going to the byline, but does a wonderful a turn. And the ball played inside. Surely it's buried. Would you believe it? Central at Glenmuir. They take the lead. And James Gallimore gets on the score sheet for Central. He was so used to the bench last season, but what an impact at the start of this campaign for Central High, and they lead Glenmuir by a goal to nil. And it's no less than they deserve Central. They have dominated the game, and with this luscious piece of skill, the game was opened, and all he had to do was tap this one in. Left-footed finish keeper no chance and an early goal for central is this the remaking of a fairy tale with much surer footing perhaps mentioned that last campaign they started out with a loss they scratched they got bruised they they limped their way all the way to the final of the Costa Cup, and here they are again across the area, not clear properly. There was an opportunity there. He was looking for a foul. He went down too easily, I felt, on that occasion, James Dyer. Flag goes up, offside. They didn't reach the final with conviction, the Jay Williams. And when they got they, there, they were beaten by a superior outfit in Clarendon College. Many persons thought that they, they didn't deserve to be in the final but with that under their belt with the prestige of being in a da costa cup final they have started this season with confidence and gallimore has opened his account here how will glenmere respond it can be seen that central are keeping a really high line well here they come central on his right with space, can't shoot. There wasn't a lot of power there. Took a deflection, I think. But he did have options to his left and to his right. I don't blame the strike for shooting, though. No, you never do. You never do. That shows confidence, but... I'm not quite sure. This is a type of game that Glenmere would have wanted more evidence of the high line there that Glenmere are trying to breach. But I don't think this is a game that coach Andrew Peart would have wanted Glenmuir. I think they're forcing the ball into the attacking third way too much. A hallmark of their team last season was their defense and how they control games through their midfield play. And they, sometimes they really just took the sting out of games just by passing it around. We haven't seen that a lot so far in this game. Even this man about to take the throw for them Blackwood plays at left back but does invert into the midfield often and he's a key key way in which Glenmere control games and yet to see him get on the ball much so I think some calm would do this Glenmere outfit, outfit really well but central they are pressing Gallimore gives chase but Glenmere will mop up at the back here they are going long over the top and the keeper having no issues there in collecting that one and will eat up a few seconds <laughs> robbed of the ball in a dangerous area an opportunity here ball played inside the box 
Hearts 1-1. That was a sure finish. Nyron Allen gets his second of the season. And there was no doubt. And Glenmuir, they come roaring back in this match. 1-1. Glenmuir have title aspirations, and that is how champions respond. Kyle Gordon rubbing central and then playing a beautiful pass. Naron Allen made absolutely no mistake with the finish. You said it was a sure one. Yep, it definitely was. And just like that, it's one all. And maybe now... Maybe now they'll come out to play Glenmuir. Back level. And Central. Pegged back. Gallimore to the byline. Pulls it across. Nobody there for Central. Central, they have been bossing the possession, haven't they? They must be wary, though, with the possession that they have. Because they're keeping such a high line, Glenmere are looking to pounce. And we've already seen multiple offsides, probably close ones as well. This first 16 minutes has flown by. And it's due really to the quality of the two teams that we've seen just thus far. Whistle goes and it's going to be a free kick to Central High. making sure that everything is in place. Justin Murray. The wall being positioned, it's a four-man wall. Five men at the moment. Nathaniel Howe behind it. Free Mason just reminding the Glenmuir wall of the infringement that they could cause now that they are positioned inside the box, especially in regards to the handball rule. How's delivery inside at the near post? Well, that's almost awkward, but they do get a corner kick out of it. Central high. Yeah, sneaking that one in and, ooh, Murray, you expect better from him. So Central, they have a corner kick. Stephen Hamilton with it. There's a delivery inside at the near post. A little bit too shallow for his liking and now... Glenmuir trying to pound safety first, according to Giovanna McDonald. So Mary's College trailing Naparima College by two goals to one over in the SFL in Trinidad and Tobago. And that's a half-time score. We're all squared here at Glenmuir High. And this is Johnson. Couldn't quite gather. It's a battle of the eights.
Glenmuir trying to take that one quickly. Can get the shot off, but it was a bit wayward in the end. From Blackwood. Still trying to get the name and what his parents were thinking in calling him New Money. Spelled N-U-E-M-O-N-I-E. -E. New Money, Blackwood. Well, that's how we speak things into being, I suppose. Yeah, someone whose name is Leger, I know I can't really comment on strange first names, but that's a new one for me. <laughs> Leger isn't that bad, I don't think. Yeah, that was a late trip. Kyle Gordon already has had an impact on this game, Kyle Gordon. The battle of the number 10s will be so pivotal in this one. Here's Johnson. Johnson with the chip inside the area. Too close to the keeper. No issues there for Harriet. And Japir just giving his players instruction. He's a different type of coach, especially in his demeanor. Far from bullish, I suppose, on Andrew Peart. This one lofted inside the area. But I suppose there's a difference between coaching and management and how to get the best out of your players. It's easy to say that Andrew Peart has a good footballing mind. Can he propel these boys to glory though? Had the one year stint at Jamaica College and the old boys didn't give him another chance. It was the first year in a while that they didn't win any trophies as this one sent inside the air and the header is over the top. But he has a, a bunch of youngsters working with now. As we take a look at the chance for Orain Watson, looking for his third this season. National under 17 representative Orain Watson. Here's Glenn Muir again. Needed a better ball inside the area. There's a hand injury. Watson may require some attention there. I'm not sure if he, was, he landed, he didn't land properly or he was stepped on, but he seems to be in a lot of pain. And based on the reaction from his teammates, it doesn't look good at all. I really do hope it's not a horrific injury. But the reaction from the teammates don't look good at all. And he's getting some help. The spectators even are concerned. Wow. This does not look good. You can see that Kyle Gordon is, is almost inconsolable. The number 10 on the left of your screen, which means that it, it must be difficult to look. We, we have to warn you viewers. He landed awkwardly. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. 
even from afar, the gravity of that injury and how he landed. Well, I think obviously his afternoon is done. Glenmuir will have to make a change soon. The captain of Glenmuir will have to get a hold of himself. He's leading the rest of his team and he is in pain and you can tell that it's a serious injury. Yep, I said before that the captain will have to get himself together. Kyle Gordon. What he saw imprinted in his mind and it will be for a long time apparently. And now Glemio, they have to regroup. And you mentioned man management. It's a different side of Andrew Peart that you're seeing now. We don't often see this side but he has to get these boys up again based on what they just saw. Yeah, and especially in a game that started at such a frantic tempo for both teams, it's clear that this one might suck the energy out of the team, especially a player of his caliber, Arain Watson. I mentioned that he was a national under-17 representative he also contributed to close to 30 goals last season. Started the season contributing to three in their 4 0 win over Old Harbour. So he's obviously a key member of this team. And just judging from the reaction of his captain, the rest of the players, not a good injury. We just surely hope that everything can work out, that he will be okay. Irene Watson. 17 goals, 9 assists last season for the striker. And Glemio warming up some substitutes. Obviously didn't expect to make that change. But they'll have to come into the fray soon. Then are still temporarily down to 10 men. Tayshon Rowe tried to get it and uh, gets there illegally. Central. They have the numerical advantage, but they're not making that count. Row. That's a foul, wasn't it? No. Collection clean, according to the referee. Johnson winning it back. White. Headley retrieving that one. Tavon Coleman on it now. Has Wallace for company. Wallace going over the top. And uh, oh, he's such a speedy player, is Zidane Christie, isn't he? Covered the space so well. Thought that uh, he would have been in some trouble. But uh, covered Kyle Gordon really well. Jamie is set to make the change really soon. Your central though. Lovely collection. Couldn't quite keep it. Goes the other way. 
can it supply the pass out wide they do an opportunity for Glenn Muir here ball played inside what a turn was he brought down the referee points to the spot penalty to Glenn Muir Johnson with the vicious turn the defense didn't react smartly and he was brought down in the penalty area and the penalty awarded by referee Mason yeah I don't think it was the smartest challenge by Harriet yeah I, I don't think it had to be made he was heading away from goal and I think he's granted gifted Glenmere a chance to go 2-1 up in this game and to take it to the captain who was just so distraught for his friend his teammate Kyle Gordon can he put Glenmere up 2-1 from 12 yards Gordon can he convert the captain of Glenmuir scored one goal last season he's looking for his first here steps up to shoot and scores Captain Gordon from 12 yards has put Glenn Muir in front. They have come from behind and pulling away from adversity now. Glenn Muir with the advantage over Central High on their home court. It was calm, it was assured, and it was lethal to finish. Good, good penalty there by Kyle Gordon. Goalkeeper guessed the right way, tried to atone for his sins, but he couldn't do it. Only one goal last season. He's equaled that already. And Glenn Muir, after being one goal behind, are now 2 1 up. They have turned this around. John Cummings has made his way on the park for Glenn Muir. And uh, just to confirm that change as Glenn Muir trying to, to go forward. So Cummings has come on for Orain Watson. He is the cousin of the former national striker Omar Cummings. And if he's anything like his uncle, it will be a treat to watch. Offside trap. In full use. He's actually the cousin of the Wolves as well. So he's coming from a football family. Keneal Wolf, Woolery Wolf, there he is, and he's a nephew of Omar Cummings, but the cousin of the Wolves, usually ply their trade with Port United as well, the Wolves. Yeah, Woolery had a stint with Humber Lion as well. Mm -hmm. Omar Cummings, his uncle, known for his speed as well. So let's see how fast he is. Should the opportunity arise for Glenn Muir's number 19. I'm sure he thought that he wouldn't have been involved in the game so quickly. 
there he's trying to win the ball from Zidane Christie. Central, they have a throw deep in their own half. The venue, I suppose, still shaken by what took place a few minutes earlier with the Glenmore striker, Orion Watson, being taken off, having suffered what appears to be a, a horrific hand injury. He was obviously able to walk off the field, but he was in some pain, and his teammates could barely look at the injury and in particular his captain who had to pick himself up to score from the penalty spot just a, a couple of minutes after that lovely take and turn <laughs> that was Cummings looking for a route now it's with Central's Dyer, Dyer trying to make his way through. And uh, the challenge, a tough one, had come in from Tayshawn Rowan. The yellow card is going to be flashed in his direction. Yeah, a really robust midfielder he is. But now he has his name taken. He has to be careful for the remainder of this one. And he might have put his team in a bit of a bother. Good area for a free kick, this. So, yes, some treatment being done on the field of play. As Glenn Muir trying to organize themselves defensively. Kimani is downstairs, and I think he has the latest in regards to what exactly took place with the Glenn Muir striker, Rain Watson. Kimani? Thank you, Donald. It was a terrible sight with Orain Watson, and the physio was working it out, flexing constantly, and he was also treated with magic spray. I can tell you now, it has been wrapped, and Orain Watson seems to have left the venue. I saw him going towards the exit, and being accompanied by some team officials, but I'll follow up on that story. But as it stands now, Orain Watson's day has come to an end. Back. Thanks, Kimani. Yeah wasn't the best sight to to look at he was in extreme pain it seems in the meantime central they have a free kick in a dangerous spot how is behind it and so too is hamilton it is hamilton the wall did its job Gordon sends it long. Collection nicely done by Howe. And here's an effort that's wide of the mark. He was moving to his left, Murray. Not sure if he did that one for the cameras because it was going well wide. I wouldn't say well wide, but it clearly bothered Murray. I guess he was taking no chances. It was well wide, Leger. If you ask him, he'd say that he knew it was going well wide. Justin Murray. Just did the dive for sure. Oh. 
We'll have another chance to clear Hamilton. Lemieux, they pick it up. Ball played inside the area. Not the most convincing clearance. Comes across to Nyron Allen. And uh, Allen was robbed of the ball, but uh, he will get the throw for his team. Taken quickly. Gordon. Nicely done. So cool, Brandon Wallace. Oh, and again, Wallace. Ball played inside. That's delightful over the top. It almost worked. It almost worked. Naren Allen looking for his second of the game. Couldn't quite direct it on target. It was a really delightful cross. The header was good as well, but just looped over the bar. Oh, lost in a dangerous area, almost pounced on it. Here Cummins getting out muscled a bit out there. Mm -hmm. But he's like a little terrier. We've seen that so far. Snapping at the heels of the defenders. Trying to win the possession. Good for the pressing game, I suppose. Glim, you're operating with a lot more space. Not the same intensity that we saw from Central in the opening few minutes of the game. And Glenn Muir getting more and more in control. Central have it. Glimmer get it back. That's delightful. That's wonderful. Inside the area. Oh, the finish though was disappointing, especially with the Andre Johnson behind it. You expect better from him. Central flag stays down, challenge coming in. Central, they look a little bit winded, it seems. Yeah, I, I think a lot of their problems are stemming from the in possession play, not quite as calm as they were, especially in the first 15 minutes or so. Glenmuir actually. Looking much calmer. That's a good ball out, you know. Oh, and he manages to keep the possession. Has some help. Cummings on it. Cummings. Glemure still with it. Shot from distance. Doesn't have a lot of power behind it. Jason White. With the attempt. Harriet with no issues. Hopeful ball over the top. He manages to get there. James Dyer, Dyer. Not sure who was trying to supply the pass too, but it wasn't good. Cummings, not the best first touch, and the last touch off him. 
He's definitely trying Cummings. Expectant crowd here at Glenmuir. Yeah, they are pleased with the scoreline now. Yeah. Central aren't making it easy for them by any stretch of the imagination, though. Not a good challenge there. That's not a good challenge. Yeah, deserve the yellow card there for Tyrese Thomas. Hmm. That could have gone wrong in so many ways. So in the first minute of four, added for stoppages, Glenmio with a free kick over on that far side, and they've placed six players inside the box, and the ball doesn't reach there. I think the referee was a bit kind to how there in his positioning. Certainly looked like around possibly half of 10 yards. Long throw inside the area, and that's headed behind for a corner kick. Glenmuir could drive home the advantage here. Here's the delivery, taken short. There's nobody there to help that on at the back post, but well, that's some good work there from Cummings. Ball sent high inside the area. There's a bit of a ricochet, but it bounces in favor of Central, trying to capitalize on the counter, but really good interception there. I think that was from Coleman. Here Central on the attack, looking to pull a goal back. Wasted. Ball played through, but the keeper will cover. How? Ball played out wide to James Gallimore. Gallimore on his right foot, lovely challenge coming in from Wallace. Here's Cummings. An exciting talent, Cummings. <laughs> well, he has a lot of confidence. Well, he had the confidence, at least. First half winding down here. Central, how inside the box, can he finish? Corner kick, will they have time for the corner? Yes, according to referee Mason, they'll have to move quickly. Central high. 
according to our watch four minutes of stoppages up So corner kick to Central. Gallimore's delivery at the near post, easily handled, and that should be that for the first half. Glenn Muir, they had some work to do. They really had some work to do. Gallimore was the one who gave Central the lead early in this piece. And then Naren Allen had equalized for them. And... Uh, Then uh, Kyle Gordon converted from 12 yards in the aftermath of their leading score from last season. Being taken off the field, injured. Orain Watson having a, a hand injury that looked horrific for his teammates who could barely watch the scene of the in incident as he laid on the floor. But at the halftime interval, Glenn Muir with the advantage. And they lead by two goals to one. Really big game here in the Dacosta Cup. Glenmuir High versus Central High. And it's been a good one. Glenmuir 2-1 up over Central. Let's see how we got to that scoreline. The game started and it was actually the Dacosta Cup finalist from last season who started the game better. Central. And it was really good work here by James Dyer on that right wing. And he really laid it on a platter. James Gallimore made absolutely no mistake. He really only had to put his foot through it. But we could admire this piece of skill from Dyer to set it up for ages. And we're going to look at it one more time, of course. Really good finish, calm finish to put Central up 1-0. But the Ben Francis Cup champions, they didn't lay and wait. Kyle Gordon assisted Naron Allen and his finish was just as calm, just as assured as Central's earlier. Kyle Gordon doing what he does best and that set up goals. And he did it really well outside of the foot pass. Naron Allen, well controlled, well finished. Just like that, it was Glenmore 1, Central 1. Right after that, it was Naron Allen played it across yeah that was a loose tackle by central's custodian and kyle gordon the captain 
he stepped up and he made no mistake with his penalty and that's how we got here Glenmere 2 Central 1 first half stats it was a tight game between both teams and the stats show that basically identical on shots 15 between both teams 8 for Glenmuir 7 for Central equal amount of shots on target with 3 apiece 5 fouls for Glenmuir 3 for Central a yellow card apiece as well 5 offsides for Glenmuir they were always testing that back line of Central 4 corners for Central 2 for Glenmuir the possession is more in Central's favour but I think the flow of the game has shown that it's really even and Glenmuir on top after this one Glenmuir 2, Central 1 at half time. Kimani is around yet again. He has some fans. Let's see this for the water break. Thank you, Lejay. I found them really quickly this time. I must say I'm here with the king of the all Central fans, I, if I may say so myself. Please introduce yourself for the persons at home. Stelevit Ingram, Principal, Central High School. Speak to me about the game so far. You know, it's been an eventful game. You're down at the half, but how do you feel about it? I'm still hopeful. It's a good match. My boys are ready. They are not even halfway through the match. And I know that they are going to do what they ought to do, which is take it to Glenmuir today. And if they don't, what are you going to do, Principal? Just remember that when we entered the Costa Cup last year, we lost our first match. It is not about the first match. It's about the ending. All right, you heard it here from the principal of Central High, and I'm joined by a Glenmuir mega fan. She says all the boys out there are her sons. Introduce yourself for those at home. I am Mrs. Williams Allen, teacher at Glenmuir, and the boys are mine. They're all mine. Speak to me. Which subject do you teach? I teach several subjects. Management of business, principles of business, business basis, principles of accounts, office administration. In terms of what you've seen from your boys thus far, how pleased are you? I'm very pleased. They've been doing very well, and I know the score will be 4-1. Whilst it's 2-1 now, I know my boys will deliver. I believe in my boys. Well, the principal of Central just spoke very strongly that he's coming back. Send him a message for the persons at home to hear as well. He is not coming back. Glenn, we are going to prove to him today that we are the winners. We are the big side. We are the big team. And we're going to prove to him today that we are. And in rebuttal, the principal of Central says, Central is the school of choice. We are in the center. And you are going to realize at the end of this match who will be on top. The, the, the persons who made it to the finals last year. Well, you heard it here from the Clarendon College alumni himself. Well, stay with us. We'll find out who's going to win when we come back. Oh, we are looking forward to the return of the UEFA Champions League on Tuesday. Young boys against RB Leipzig, 11.45 in the morning, 12.45 p.m. ECT. And you can catch that on Sportsmax 2 as well as on the Sportsmax app. You can download it right now to keep in touch with all of your football action from Europe as well as schoolboy football also on Tuesday. Paris Saint-Germain will take a part uh, in the UEFA Champions League with Borussia Dortmund at 2 p.m. Jamaica time, 3 p.m. ECT. And that match is also on Sports Max 2. And then also on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, Lazio against Atletico Madrid at 2 o'clock Jamaica time, 3 in the Eastern Caribbean. On Wednesday, we have a few matches for you as well. Real Madrid against Union Berlin. And that may be a baptism of far, who knows? 11.45 in the morning, Jamaica time, 12.45 ECT. And then after that, right after that, also on Sports Max 2, Arsenal and their return to the Champions League. PSV Eindhoven, their opposition. And that match is on Sports Max. 2 p.m. Jamaica time, 3 p.m. ECT. And again, you can watch all the matches on the Sports Max app. Download it now. 
Glenmuir High. They lead Central High by two goals to one. And it's been quite a journey for the home team, having come from behind to now secure this lead heading into the second half. Yeah, it really has been. It's going to be interesting to see how both teams come out. Glenmere, I don't think, exerted enough control over this game in the first half, but they got it together, they got the goals, and they threatened in behind Central constantly. For Central, I think it will be get about getting that man in frame there, Nathaniel Howe, on the ball more, and being much calmer in possession also to try and see if they can unlock this Glenmere defense yet again. Central, of course, the only team in the group stages last season to get a point off Glenmuir. They'll be looking to replicate that feat and maybe even go better than that this season. Glenmuir will kick off the proceedings in the second half. Overcast conditions here. The rain, though, has stayed away. And... Uh, here we go. So, both teams rejuvenated. Central, will they be able to start the second half as they did the first? If they do, it would be a welcomed equalizer. can be said that this might be the toughest game that either team has to play in this group. Well, I, I don't want to discount a team that scored 18 goals this past no, week. No, you don't, actually. Especially a team that has Dustin Cohen in their ranks. <laughs> I'm actually a, a little bit surprised and pleasantly surprised as well that another school didn't pick him up. I'm sure he had a lot of offers. Oh, definitely. Of course, a player who also plies his trade in the Jamaica Premier League. For Fair United. For Fair United. Also represented. That's a really good tackle. Yeah, it is from Howe, but the referee oh. says it was illegal. Oh, no. Look clean to me. Clearly not. Have to see it again. Was it slightly from behind? Uh, no, that's clean, though. He, he did do a bit of a scissors action in the follow-through of it. So in today's game, that is a foul, but frustrating one, I'm sure, for him to give away. Not sure what they expected to do with his right leg, but, but sure, whatever. So free kick taken quickly. Glenmuir with it, thinking of a shot, and that's well over the top. Ambitious to say the least. Effort coming in there from O'Neill Headley. Just one goal to his name last term, Headley. And looking to open his account with a spectacular on that occasion. Gordon. Ball chipped inside. Oh, he manages to get there. Oh, well done. Very well done. Good anticipation. And DeAndre Johnson gets his second goal this season. Attacking the ball inside the box. Harriet in no man's land. And Glenmuir with their third of the afternoon. And they have daylight over Central. Central playing themselves into problems. They are trying to play out from the back. That's one mistake. The second mistake is the miscommunication between the central defender and the goalkeeper. And who wanted it most? Who else but DeAndre Johnson? That's his second goal of the season. That's a two-goal lead. Hold on. Yeah, Glenmere survive. But that's a two-goal lead for Glenmere now, almost replicating the score that they gave to Central last season let's see if central can 
trying to will their way back into this one as they will their way through the Da Costa Cup season last season. They did put four past Old Harbour in their first game, Glenmuir High. They now lead Central by three goals to one. Central, they now have a free kick. Glenmuir with a bit more comfort. But this is some way out for Central. The wall being meticulously set up by Justin Murray. Five-man wall. Gallimore is behind it. Howe is behind it. And that's deflected wide. Corner kick. Yeah, the wall did its job. That's definitely not the start Central would have wanted at the start of the second half. Yeah, it was always going to be critical for them to just not concede. And they have conceded early in the second half. Now they have to come from behind. There's the corner kick at the back post. Headed away. And Glenmuir, can they counter? Oh, the miscontrol, disappointing. Lovely ball over the top for Glenmuir. Can they get another here? The dig is magnificent. Oh, that's real class. Real class. Harriet had no response. And what a finish that was. Well, he bears a name with one of the highest standards in Jamaica and Cummings was so cool under the pressure and the dink was absolutely majestic and what a way to open your account this season Omar Cummings would be proud what a finish that was a sublime chip by Tajan Cummings and the youngster has certainly made an impressive impact on this game now and not only that he has put this game probably out of reach for Central How will he respond? How can he respond? The dream lasted only for a little while for Central when they went ahead. Nicely done by Wallace. I think the really impressive thing is that Glenmuir lost their star marksman Oren Watson in the first half due to injury. And off the bench, I could call upon a youngster who can finish like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. Then he just ran into a bit of traffic. Oh, 
foul. Turning on the afterburners there, Gallimore. Cuts it back. It's wonderfully done. Can they get one back? It's wide of the mark. Allen was so very close there to get in his second of the game. Yes, it was almost perfect. It was almost perfect. Dyer, it was cutting. Had that left-footed shot, was aiming for that far post. Yeah, yes. it was James Dyer. But good work from Gallimore down the left-hand side. Had the composure to just almost pause the play and then make the pass inside the area. And Dyer, well... Glimmer does well to get out of their own defensive third. And now it's with Gordon. Oh, he manages to get off a really good pass, but he, he was in an offside position there. And that's Nyron Allen. How needs some attention. Oh no, it's not how it's actually Tyrese Thomas. I think Central actually need a breather. The way Glenmere have started the second half. Two substitutions being made also. Yep, a little bit too eager on that occasion, Javon Campbell. But the changes will eventually come. Roger Lewin, who were part of the squad last season for Glemure, both want to make an impact now. But Donald has been taken out. Aiton has been taken out by Central. Let's see how they juggle the pieces here. Michael Ricketts, the JFF president, in the middle. Keith Wellington, the ISA president, on the right. They've been rattled in the second half, Central. Blackwood with the throw. Last touch of Gordon. No, it's going to be a corner kick. Taken quickly, driven across the area. Another corner kick for Glenn Muir. 
and Harriet needs some attention. I think he landed awkwardly, maybe, maybe experiencing a bit of cramp. Yeah, just being checked out there. It does look like it's cramp that uh, Ronnie Harriet is experiencing. In the meantime, Glenn, you're warming up. A few more players. to be a little better Harriet <laughs> hydration of course is a key component of uh, preparing for a long schoolboy football season the sponsor water yeah after 61 minutes Glenmere 4-1 up but even in this success they lost their top goal scorer from last season Arain Watson to an injury in the first half and Kimani O'Sullivan he's on the ground and we're hoping to get a update from him soon shot was blocked inside the box yeah so hopefully we can hear from him soon uh, update on that situation but until then it's glenmuir pressing the issue all the way back to the goalkeeper yeah, glenmuir justin murray glenmuir a very successful team from last season ben francis cup winners ball sent long not controlled properly sent inside the area looking for cummings and the central had numbers back but they get it back cummings doing really good work inside the box trying to set up his teammate here's an opportunity now and the ball just moved away from him and the play being called back for a free kick to glenmuir in a really promising position Lemur making a couple more changes. DeAndre Johnson, one of the goal scorers, will be taken out. And also Tayshawn Rowe. His shift is over. Derek Henry comes on. And Ramon Francis is now on the park. This one is drilled inside. And they get a corner out of it in the end. 
Yeah, Glenmore trying to fancy trick there for that free kick routine. Didn't quite work out on that occasion. Seems as if the Dacosta Cup schools have a lot of those planned coming into these games. Already seen Clarendon College score a wonderfully executed one. Here's the corner kick coming in. It's a good delivery that's headed away bravely by Roger Lewin, I believe, at that near post. And Central trying to break free, but that final pass disappointing. Central throw. Cummings trying to get even more involved. I really like how he's been putting himself about since coming on. Flag is up for offside. Yeah, if it's one thing that Glenmere have done today is be caught outside. Probably approaching double figures at this point. But it is good intent. Teasing and testing that back line of Central. Thank you guys. Just some important information about the change of kit for Glenmuir. As you can see, the shorts are looking a bright orange. That's due to the fact that the kit before was being covered by the shirts when they're outside of the jerseys. So they have swapped that out. So if you're seeing different shorts on the pitch, it's due to the shirts covering the sponsors. That's it for me. Long throw inside the area. Central trying to come away with the possession, but Glemur they have it back. fan there watching the game on the sports max up wanting to see a replay of the action i presume or maybe he wants to hear donald and i i'm not quite sure i'm going to assume it's the first one how playing that one through ball going long can he keep it in play he can allen A bit of a mistake there, but he wins it back, keeps it in play. Allen inside the box, plays it across. Surely, take on. Derrick Henry from off the bench makes the impact for Glenn Muir, and this is now beyond doubt. 
they are all over Central High. It's been a dominating performance from the Ben Francis Cup winners. And they now lead by five goals to one. He came off the bench and Derrick Henry, his namesake's nickname is King Henry. And he has surely put the crown, put the icing on top of the cake for Glenmuir as they've surely won this game. Central started well, but Glenmuir, who many tipped to be the biggest challenger to the Clarendon throne, have surely laid down a marker with this their second win of the season. Jermaine Douglas, he has some thinking to do. The season will be long, but I think it's Andrew Peart who will be the happier of the two managers. I know, actually, it's Andrew Peart who's going to be the happier of the two managers following this game. It's now Glenmuir 5, Central 1. This resonates loudly. 20 minutes to go. The scoreline could be anything. You wouldn't believe that Glenmuir was a team that suffered adversity in this game with the loss of their leading goal scorer last season. Lorraine well, Watson had to be taken out of the action in the first half with a hand injury. Well, they have responded strongly. This effort is wide of the mark. They have the players to make a, a run though in this competition. But it's not the start that they wanted, Central. Far from it, actually. We know that their principal said that they lost the first game last season and they recovered. But defeats like these to opponents like these can be a little bit demoralizing, knowing that they might have to, they will have to face Glenmuir again, but they might have to face them in the latter stages of the Dacosta Cup if they get out of the group that is well they have to face them again in this first round at any rate so they have to look forward to that too but they have looked a little bit flustered today and the principal will have a lot on his mind. Although, he does look too upset. He knows that the season is a long one. And Glenn Muir, I think this is really just a rehash of last season in terms of their dominance. Glenn Muir, of course, I think we're extremely unlucky to not make it further in the Dacosta Cup. Bowed out at the quarter-final stage, but if you even listen to what they did last season in terms of their success amongst the Costa Cup teams. They played 17 games total, 12 clean sheets, only conceded six goals across all competitions. Look at this. What a run. No. Just wasted in the end. Yeah, the pass wasn't a match, but yeah, 53 goals scored in 17 games, only six conceded. That's the best defense across the Costa Cup. I think... They only didn't make it to the semi-final and goal scored to Edwin Allen. They only conceded more than one goal once for the entirety of last season to Edwin Allen. A 2-0 loss. So, and that's a team that they went on to beat in the Ben Francis Cup final. Oh, that's a good dummy. It's a wonderful ball through. Can they get one back? Not with that attempt. Yeah. I think that they have preserved that record. So right now at least. I've not conceded more than one goal. Got kind of more disappointed with the end result there. Well, yeah. 
Glenmuir. Glenmuir's next opponent is Porus. And Porus, they having conceded 18 goals in one game so far this season. They are playing now, I believe. So it could be worse. They have been porous, to say the least. Yeah. It, it, it's really ironic that's the name of the school, but yeah. Two more substitutions now for Glenmuir. Yeah, Naron Allen, his day is now done. A goal and two assists to his name today. Oh, leading contender for player of the game, I think. Yeah, I think so as well. Dominic Murray making his way onto the pitch. Murray, a popular name in these parts. Of course, his father played for Jamaica's youth team in the 90s. And of course, he's also the nephew of the late Brandon Murray, who had operated Brancourt. Just, just saw, I saw, I saw a shot of his father there, and the second change made with uh, Denzel Watson coming on. Yeah, central players not too pleased, obviously. Substitute. Dylan Briscoe coming in. Seemed as if he was crying coming onto the pitch. Let's see what type of impact he can make. Central again. Oh, nicely done. Did well to get away, Gordon. <laughs> Old Harbour, they were leading Porus by five goals to nil, but the Match was halted due to lightning in the area. That also happened in the Heidel Camperdown matchup in the Manning Cup. Heidel, they were leading Camperdown by five goals to one. Inclement weather also stopping the St. Jig and Wilmers game. Kyle Gordon getting silky over there on the right hand side. St. Jago are up 2 0 at half time when rain stopped that one. Kingston College are leading Calabar High by a goal to nil in the Manning Cup. Uh, St. George's College, the leading Campion College by two goals to nil. Quick update on that Campion College versus St. George's game. Campion have pulled one back. It's 2 1 now. Oh, that was fast. Here's the effort that's driven into the arms of the goalkeeper, Harriet. That was powerful from Headley. Here's Murray. Ball played out wide. Oh, they, they apparently love him here. Gordon delivered inside at the back post. Oh, 
It went right across Murray. Still a chance here. Can they finish? Gordon robbed inside the six yard box. Oh, he does well, Murray. And uh, looking for the pass inside that took the deflection. They do love him here. Ball switched over to the right hand side for Central. Oh, that's lovely. That was absolutely lovely. Cummings is a baller. You know it. Free kick for Central. Ten minutes to go. How was robbed of the ball? Full time in that Camp and College St. George's college game. St. George's hanging on by a thread <laughs> to win 2 1. You have no idea how that game went. How can you say hanging on by uh, a thread? I, I, I have my um, links, one might say, at that, at that game. A, a lot riding on it for and, and you should for tell our audience friends. that you have links as far as Camden College is concerned with it being your alma mater yeah of course you know so I have people down at the game cons consistently feeding me information right and they are saying it was close I'll reserve thoughts on that one okay but one game that isn't close is this one here Glenmere versus Central Excelsior High, uh, they have beaten Tarrant High by seven goals to nil in another game in the Manning Cup. He's thinking of a shot, Gordon, and it's swung away from Harriet and the goal. Yeah, he's certainly having a lot of fun in this game now, Gordon. Who did you, you say was your player of the game? I think I would lean towards Naren Allen, actually. Gordon has been excellent I, I do think Cummings has played really well as well a lot of good performances I actually want to that's a good ball through it you know. really is a good ball through and still inside the area can he apply the finish Murray had help surrounded by his defenders there but didn't Briscoe almost make it a name in this game yeah and I do think also Brandon Wallace Glenmere's number three playing that right back right center back role got an assist in this game as well with a lovely ball over the top i think he's had a really good game as well but for me naren allen with his goal and two assists before coming off he would be my pick maybe the vetoing process is on the way we'll update you in a few here is glenn muir Cummings was in an offside position at any rate. You know, honestly, Donald, I've been vetoed quite a few times in my life. But on this occasion, my foot is down. Well, to be fair, you aren't flying, so I understand that. Give me your again.
Cummins doing that really well. They're switching the play over now to the right hand side. Trying to beat his marker. Has some assistance now. Watson gets a return ball. Central had numbers over on that far side. This is Javon Campbell. Lovely ball through. Just manages to get a foot in there. Did Ramon Francis. He said that he was confident in the first half, and I think after that goal, it has really skyrocketed. Oh, yeah, he's gone up to the next level, I think. Here he's on the ball, Cummings. Decides to send this one first time across, and here's a shot that had to be parried over. They're humming. They're buzzing. Glenmuir High. The attempt by Denzel Watson forcing the save. Here they come again. Cummings almost stripped that one inside into the path of a teammate. Let's take a look at the Sportsmax app moment of the day. And uh, it was an absolutely delightful finish from Tajon Cummings, who opened his account really well with that dink. The nephew of Omar Cummings and the cousin of a real football family in Jamaica, the Wolves. But look at this over and over. That's just magnificent. We remember that one this season. May end up being in the top 10 at the end of the season. If Phil Riley has anything to do about it. There's a the ball coming across the area. Oh, dangerously whipped in. And it goes behind for a goal kick. This could have been more. This really could have been more for Glenn Muir. I think Harriet is struggling again with the cramps. Yeah. Maybe a hydration issue. More than likely a, a hydration issue for Harriet. And it, and it was pretty warm earlier. Oh, there's a principal of Glenmuir High School. And she seems to be really happy with the performance of her boys this afternoon.
Glenmuir High, of course, they are still, well, they are celebrating their anniversary weekend. And they are celebrating it with a, a win on their 65th anniversary. So Glenmuir being well supported here, of course, at their home venue. Of course, it it would have been absolutely jam-packed during the weekday, right after school. And this place is usually quite a sight, to be fair. But Dr. Marsha Smalling is here watching the boys celebrating with them. Three minutes of stoppages to be played. Glenmuir with a 5 1 advantage. Free kick to Central High. So Central, can they get another goal back here? No, no. Gadim Moore is behind this. Campbell skies it. Well, they are creating waves, for real. And uh, to be fair, Central High, they have been caught up in the tsunami. 5-1. So it's been a lovely weekend for Glenmuir High. Henry. Try to get the cross hit, throw in for Glenmuir. Not a lot of time remaining. Long throw taken, looking for Henry, and how back they are doing some defensive work. Central high, still looking for that goal. Gallimore has been fighting a battle, but it's for a losing cause because Glenmuir High, they have been dominant had to get out of a hole and they had to come from behind they suffered adversity as they lost their top scorer from last season in Orain Watson due to a hand injury but still they managed to put five unanswered by Central who had taken the lead early in this contest 
and after a while, it wasn't a contest anymore. They were dominant on home soil. And on the weekend, where they are creating waves on their 65th anniversary, Central were lost in said waves. And in the end, Glenmuir, the Ben Francis Cup winners, they've made a statement in this the Costa Cup season, 5-1 the score. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, and the Essential started off really confidently. And in the 11th minute, they got the advantage. Some good work out wide, and then Gallimo with the finish. Some wonderful stuff there. Out wide, started with Dyer, and then Gallimo with the slot home and central they were on a high thinking of the upset at that time four minutes later an opportunity converted allen in the 15th minute with a wonderful finish it was gordon who did a lot of the work and that was a nice finish you know it really was but give credit to kyle gordon And then, ball played inside the area, on the turn, brilliantly done. And he was cut down there. And Gordon converting from 12 yards after that foul on DeAndre Johnson inside the box. 2-1 to Glenn Muir. In the second half, they went into another gear and uh, reacting quickest inside the box was Johnson and look at that header guiding it over the keeper who ended up in no man's land again it was very good play by Naren Allen and then the ball over top looking for Cummings look at this finish oh that's first class really is just the composure there. Saw the keeper off his line. Just a quick look up. Picked his spot. Found his spot. And Tajon Cummings opening his account. And I suppose that's a standard for him this season. And then he worked really hard out wide. And managed to play this one inside on a platter. No issues there for Derrick Henry in the 69th minute. Again, Allen with some good work. And Henry making no mistake, placing it to the left of Harriet. And that was all she wrote. So Glemio with 19 shots, 11 of which were on target. Central with 14 shots, four on target. It was uh, not quite a physical game. A couple of yellow cards were shown and 14 fouls in total. Corner kicks, five apiece, but the majority of the possession in favor of Glenmuir High at 69%. It's now time to hear from the Waterman of the match. And thank you, Donald. I'm joined here by man of the match from Glenmuir, Nyron Allen. Naron, I can tell when a player had a piping hot bowl of peanut porridge. Is that right? Yes, sir. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Frankfurt and bread. Well, was that what aided you in becoming man of the match for this game? Not really. My coaches, my coach, yes, sir, they said come out, play a game, and yeah. How important was it for you to bounce back seeing that Orain got injured? How hard was that for you? Very important. In pre-season, our best swinger, foot break, and yeah, yes sir. Any message you want to send to Orain now, seeing that he's recovering? 
speedy recovery, and we all need it soon. Thank you, Naira. Yes, all the best. Sir. Yes, sir. All right, that's man of the match from Glenmuir, Nyron Allen. I'm joined now by Coach Douglas of Central High. Coach, it's one of those weird ones, isn't it? One minute you're up, one nil. The next it's 5-1. Your thoughts? Yeah, we got off to a really good start. Thought we were playing well in maybe the first 15, 20 minutes. My concern was always us scoring early and then becoming complacent. The first goal we got complacent, we conceded, and then we never regained our composure. In terms of positives coming out of this one and moving forward, anything stood out to you? Up until the end, we were still creating chances. We were just not putting them away. And when you're conceding goals and you're not taking your chances, you're going to lose games. The scoreline, I think, we should not have lost five. Minutes. But such is football. We will rebound. Thank you, Coach. All the best. Come on. Yeah. That's Coach Doggy, Coach Douglas of Central High. We're joined now by the winning coach, Andrew Peart. It's safe to crack a smile, Coach. You won. Give me your thoughts on that game. Yeah, um, the result is very important in our group stage. Um, especially also the fact that um, both teams had some level of success last year. So it's very important. A lot of talk around the town this year. Um, but for us, it's just focusing on the game. Um, we went a goal down. It's a pain because we don't like conceding goals. But I love the reaction even after the goal plus the injury to, to Orion Watson. In terms of, you speak about pain. Any update on Orin and his condition at this point? Yeah, no, um, none yet in terms of medical aid. So we'll wait and see. How do you continue this momentum, you know, that winning culture at Glenmuir? Well, it's just training hard, um, always seeking to improve. So last year we came, um, laid down some foundations and we built on it this year. More personal, are you feeling any pressure this season to deliver? From myself? The Cup That's court. the only person I really consider in terms of pressure. The one that I put on myself. But from outside, you can't control that. And I don't pay attention to that. I look at what's in front of me, the players who are in front of me, and the direction that we want to move the team to. Thank you, Coach. All the best. Thank you. It's a Manning Cup action on Sportsmax 2 Wednesday afternoon, starting at 1 o'clock with the pregame show, Camper Down against Kingston College. 2 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean time. We begin our coverage there. And then right after that, Charles Smith will take on Calabar High. And uh, you can watch that on Sportsmax 2. That's it for coverage here at Glenmuir High. The home team making a massive statement here under the tutelage of Andrew Peart. The question, how far will they go this season? Well, I suspect it's going to be answered in a few weeks. It was a convincing win over Central High after trailing early, and they came back to score five. Thanks for joining us. On behalf of the hardworking production team, it's goodbye from Glenmuir High. Yo, it's a Bob and Diver School, I got finished the league and meet now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out all about the flag pan vehicle. Looking at the crowd, but loan a support us from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some of the super real, they must have a watch it on TV too. Country and turn your knife in one reason. It's a school boy football, good job. Look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I hear me beat your chest. It's a school boy football, that team could rise and that team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows or run, come enjoy the show. Yo, it's a that, that, that competition I never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. I'm going to school from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now. Wow. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league and I steal people out but member which party start is a school boy football run from look one look all which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I hear team beat your chest 